around the world and here at home, bringing relief, hope, and the life-changing message of Jesus. You're listening to the Mize Missions Podcast with Terry Mize. Hello, everyone. We're so glad you've joined us today for Terry Mize Ministries Podcast. And uh, at this very season, summertime, we are thrilled to share with you the good news of the Word of God and believe that what we say today, Terry and I prayed and agreed together, is going to benefit you in some way. We believe the Spirit of the Lord will be able to talk to everybody, (laughs) even if we're talking about one specific topic as we normally are then we will be able to minister to you by the Holy Ghost. That's always the answer, isn't it, darling? Oh, it's always the answer. By the Holy Ghost. So um, we want to encourage you today, share with you good things, and we believe that the Holy Spirit will comfort you, teach you, as the Bible says that the Word of God is profitable for your yes, help, is. instruction, yes, in righteousness. We've got 66 books <laughs> on how to live on planet Earth no, and how to live right. successfully on planet Earth. That's it. That's the big difference. <clears throat> and so uh, we're going to share with you these things. You know, there's lots happening in the world, lots going on. Um, and, and, but the banner over the entire universe is Jesus is coming soon. And we're preparing to be ready to go with him. And in order to do that, we've got to preach the gospel around the world. We got to preach the gospel uncompromised. That's right. We can't preach it by our opinion or our idea no, or no, what no, no. what somebody thinks it said. We've got to go to the Word of God and find out what it does say. The and as I've said many, many times, you know, with the gospel, with the Word of God, with the Bible, with God, right. we as Christians don't get an opinion. No, we don't. That, that irritates when people when that. I say <laughs> that, you know. But but I mean, a true Christian, it doesn't irritate. But right. but when we realize that, hey, we're in the army. We're we're soldiers right. under That's command. Right. We're we're about the master's business. Jesus didn't get an opinion. He said, I only say what I hear my father say. Oh, that's so right. He said, I only do what I see my father do. He said, that's I didn't right. come to do my own will, it takes the pressure but the will of him that sent me. <laughs> that's right. Well, you know, what makes us think that if Jesus didn't get an opinion, if Jesus didn't get a vote, if he, exactly. if he just was a soldier under command, if he just did what he was told, if he just said what he heard his father say and oh, that's did right. what he saw his father do, and he didn't come to do his own will but the will of him that sent him, what makes us think we get a vote or we get an opinion when when Jesus didn't? No, oh, we, we right. are soldiers under command. We look into the word. We get our instructions. We say, yes, sir, and we don't change it. The Bible, the Bible really has some things to say about people that change the word of God. He said, you better not. Woe to you. Whoa, if you change right. one that's word of this Bible, you just can't do it. Jesus himself said this, that the earth will pass away, heaven will pass away, uh, the earth will pass away, but not one jot or one tittle of this word. Uh, from the mouth of God, wow. inspired of the Holy Ghost, will pass away. So, uh, Renee, Christians need to get back to the Bible. That's right. We used to call ourselves word people. And I used to laugh and say, well, most people that say they're word people aren't really word people. They're favorite word people. You know, they have a, they have a favorite word. And that's true. <clears throat> they have a few that's scriptures true. in the Bible that they're favorites to them. It's kind of like every, every wino on Skid Row. Exactly. And every drunk, uh, you know, uh, knows the scripture that says, take a little wine for the tummy's yeah, sake. You can, know, I mean, they have favorite they can, they can scriptures here those. and there. Yeah, no uh, joke. But we, to be word people, we've got to adhere to the word of God in every subject, no matter whether we like it or don't. And there's scriptures in there I don't like, but that doesn't make any difference. God never said, hey, Terry, do you like this? Yeah. Uh, I think I'll put this in the Bible if you like it, if it's okay with you. No, 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 no. Uh, he put the word there and said, son, you better do it. You better see to the doing of it. Well, that's right. And if we, you know, I always go back to this in my own thinking to settle issues uh, of uh, where there's some sort of discussion or debate on them. But th- th- is that uh, heaven... If we're looking, well, I'll just say it this way. If we're looking, uh, if someone's out there God shopping and they're trying to find the God, the creator, the one that made everything, the the end all to be all voice of authority, then you would want a God whose word that was unchangeable. Absolutely. You wouldn't want a wishy-washy God that that changes his mind on Monday from what he said on Sunday. Or that, like they say, you and I laugh about so much now that in our generation people want to say that the Bible is fluid. It changes with with the the population or the times. (laughs) And the same thing with the Constitution. All of these things, the Bible is... Neither of those documents are fluid. No. And and it's amazing to me, (laughs) Terry. They're immovable. They're immutable. 
temple, they're, they're, they're set in stone. No, that's <laughs> actually, right. Actually, God actually set them in stone with Moses. <laughs> that's right. Duh. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny because, you know, it's, it's so ridiculous that the way the world and uh, the arrogance of human nature is to always think that their opinion would supersede a settled law, settled word from God, that his words are forever settled. Forever and settled in heaven. Forever settled. They want to say that nowadays and make it a cliched statement. And it's just so absolutely ridiculous that he says that no, nothing of what I've ever said is going to pass away. No, that's exactly right. And his attitude is is that if, if I'm looking for a God, I want that kind of God. No, me too. I want the God that uh, that his word does not change. <clears throat> he actually created everything, therefore, therefore knows how to fix everything yes. because he was the originator of it and the creator of it. And that I can trust him that his word will not change, that he can fix what he created, well, including how, our bodies. And how arrogant for a mere human <laughs> I mean a mere human I know I know to say you know what I know more than God I think I'll just rewrite the Bible I think I'll right. just change this oh, God my. really didn't know what he's talking about my, here's my. what he probably should have said and here's the way I'd have done it if I was God well, I well think you're this not is what God. God really meant you know yeah, I think this is what God really meant <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a mere, it's like Hillary Clinton said before the last election. She said, when I become president, the church is going to change her doctrine. Oh, How arrogant yeah, to think yeah. the church and the Bible are going to change for a mere politician. I know. The hired help. The hired help. It's but just, someone just, just stands up and says <clears throat> these ridiculous me. declarative statements as though they were the truth when the Bible has been the truth and the foundation of Western civilization, and we have the numbers to no, prove it. No, that's exactly right. And we have the results of, when you look at the Word of God, you find out how extremely important it is to go back to your foundations. I think I mentioned this in one of the other podcasts, Terry, before, but Isaiah 51 is one of the most profound scriptures uh, in about, you know, talking about what our foundation is. And uh, the prophet Isaiah was getting... It was really chastising Israel for not staying with what the fathers had written, what of God course, had said. Of course. And he said, hearken to me, you who follow after rightness and justice. He said, look to the rock from whence you were hewn and to the quarry from whence you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For I called him when he was but one. O N E, and I blessed him and made him many, and that's that's always the concept that God says. You look back and see where you came from. Right. You look back and see the foundation right. on which you were built. And He said, if you're gonna if you're gonna follow God, you've got to look at how Abraham did it. You've got to go back to the guy that actually did it, the guy that actually obeyed God. Yes, been the there. The guy done that, that actually has the fruit <clears throat> from what he did in obedience before God. And that's what faith is. You know, Romans chapter 4 that you've taught so often, you know, about that, that Abraham didn't look at himself, but he looked at what God said. Absolutely. He didn't look at Sarah. He looked at what God had told him prior to that. So that we cannot, in natural circumstances, you can't even raise children like that. You, if you don't train children to look back, what did mom say? Right. What did I tell you? Right. You know, you have. You're always saying that. What? What do? What do the bylaws say? Right. What? What do our documents say? Right. You know, and you're always having to go back and say what was said, and that's why Jesus in his ministry, you know, and then Isaiah prophesied, Jeremiah, all through the Old Testament, that Jesus was the cornerstone. Right, absolutely. He was the coping stone. He was the one we go back to. We go back to Jesus. We go back to the Word of God. We go back to the way God has always done things and said things. And that gives us such a sense of, I always like what the English say, permanence, you know, permanence. Sure, sure. <laughs> we have that permanent foundation of the Word of God. Well, yeah, God's not a wishy-washy God. God that, that 
thinks one thing one day and one thing the other day, and then a month later he thinks something else. That would be so confusing to a Christian. How could you possibly live your life? Exactly. But yet we've got something set in stone. We've got we've got the word of God that does not change. God said, I am the Lord. I change not. Uh, Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, yesterday today, today, and today forever. And forever. He's going to be the same, you know, <laughs> 10 years from now than he is than he was 10 years ago. Oh, that's marvelous. Uh, he's always going to be the same. The Word's always going to be the same. Therefore, we have something to, to anchor our faith to. We have something that we can say, there's the post. There's it. There's the post. That's We're not it. leaving the post. The word no, says, right. "Don't, don't move the post that the ancient fathers have set. Don't move the landmarks. Don't, don't move those stones." Uh, God said, uh, "Set these stones here, and so that when your your children, even children yet to be born." come to you and say, Mama, wow. Daddy, what do these stones mean? I've seen those stones there all my life. That pile of stones right there, I've seen it all my life. What, what's that for? And it, God said, and then you tell them of the great facts that God has done for Israel. You say, well, we set those stones there to remind us that God brought us across the Jordan River into the promised land on dry ground. We put those stones over there to show us where, where Moses came down from the uh, from the mount with the Ten Commandments. Right. We put right. those stones there to remind us that God gave us quail on toast to eat, uh, gave us man and quail to eat. That's right. Uh, That's right. And those stones are for a purpose, and they're never, never, never to be moved. And uh, and that way, we're we're not wishy washy because God's not wishy washy. We can go back and say, No, God has said it, and if God said it, no man can change it. And that's that's just absolutely spectacular in a human being's mind. Well, it, it supports it your faith. It gives a, you a, a foundation yes, for faith. Yes. You know, I've said oftentimes that you don't have you don't have any basis for a miracle. You don't have any right to a miracle. You don't have any reason to get a miracle unless you have a foundation a faith foundation, a word foundation, you have something in the Bible to point to and say, I have the right to a miracle because God said this. I have a right to a miracle because God said that. You don't just right. say, hey, I have a right to a miracle because I'm you know, i I'm pretty or I'm rich or I've, I've got blonde hair or I've got pretty teeth or I've, you know, I went to the right school or I've got the right education right, or I've got right, money. Right. No, no, no. The only right you have to what God said is that God said it. <laughs> and that's just so simple, you know, and that's the marvelous thing about God is that he really does make it simple. He doesn't complicate things. No, absolutely. He simply absolutely. says, you know, he simply says things like like you were talking about Abraham and Sarah is that he says, you know, this is how I've done it. This is how I'm going to keep doing it. And so you can trust that. You can rest in that. You don't have to argue about that. You don't have to go rewrite the book. I remember E.W. Kenyon's, you know, little book that he wrote on signposts on the road to success. And there are signposts. God leaves you breadcrumbs. He shows you people all through the Bible that did it this way. He even says things, you know, to tell us how simple that he's the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes. In other words, I'm, just like I was God to them, I'll be God to you. Absolutely. Just like I said it back there, uh, I'm saying the same thing to you today. It's not complicated. No. Just obey it. He is the Lord. He changes not. He changes not. I was looking at some of those things that, that you know, you've said here this morning, that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews thirteen eight. That just gives you comfort to your soul, comfort to your faith that he's not going to change. And all the things he's, exactly, exactly, he's not going to change. He's, he's said things all along. He said like, I am the God who is and who was and who is to come. Absolutely. In other words, I'm going to be the same. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's everything beginning and end. He's the same all the time. I'm going to be here like rock solid, <laughs> like, a, like the alphabet, you know, I'm going to be here. The alphabet doesn't change. I'm here all along. Then he says, I'm the beginning and the end. I'm the first and the last. In fact, it's like the Lord just finally just says, you know what? I'm just the great I am. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to be just like I was back then. I'm going to be all the way. And you can trust me. That's Isn't right. that wonderful? That's exactly right. It gives you a foundation for your faith. And it, it gives is, you something exactly. to point to and say, I believe this because of that. Because of that. You know, when the devil yeah. came to tempt Jesus in Matthew 4 and uh, and, and tempted him those three times. Every time Jesus simply reached into his well of knowledge of the Word of God 
and he had something to anchor his faith to. Right. And when Satan came and said, uh, hey, you're hungry. You've been out here for fasting for 40 days. Uh, you're the son of God. Turn these stones into bread, and you won't Isn't, be hungry anymore. Yeah, well, Jesus well. just wasn't deceived by that, wasn't uh, moved by that. He simply pointed to the anchor. He pointed to the word of God. He simply said, no, for it is written. It is written. It is written. I can't Profound do that. Words. I won't do that because it Profound is written. Words. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So Jesus was anchored to his faith. He had a faith anchor. He had a post that wasn't going to move. He had a well of knowledge that he didn't make up something in his own head. Right. He didn't stop and say, think, oh, hey, I've got, a, I've got an option here. Hey, I've got an <laughs> opinion here. Hey, I really am hungry. Hey, I really am no. the son of God. Hey, I really think I'll turn these into bread. No, that wasn't an option. He didn't get a vote. He didn't get an opinion. He just simply said, no, it is written. That has already been decided. Right. That's already been written. It's already been said. I don't have to come up with something new. I don't have to get under pressure under, under, in the spur of the moment and decide, oh, my God, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Should, should I make bread out of rocks? or What, what am I going to do? He said, nah. That, that, that's already been written. That's already been settled so over there in Deuteronomy. It says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And, and he beat the devil with that little bitty scripture out of Deuteronomy. Isn't that amazing? So the devil comes back Startling. to him with another one. And he, he says, hey, let me take you up here on the, the pinnacle of the temple. And you jump down because God's going to give his angels charge to lift you up and you won't get hurt. And Jesus said, that's ridiculous. It's written. It's already written. I don't have to make this decision today. I don't have to make this decision under duress. I don't have to make this decision uh, uh, on the spur of the moment. Uh, I don't have to make this decision out of my emotion. I don't get a vote here. I don't get an opinion here. But it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy wow. God. Period. Over and out, cut and dried. Beat him with another little scripture out of Deuteronomy. Then the devil comes back and says, hey, bow down and worship me, and I'll give you all these kingdoms, all these riches, all this stuff. Jesus didn't have to get in an emotional tizzy and an emotional straight and say, oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I, I could do this. I could do this. Uh, what do I think? What's my opinion? No, he didn't get an opinion. He didn't get a vote. He just said, no, that's already been settled. That's already written. It is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And and then he said, get thee behind me, Satan. I'm tired of this mess. And the devil left him, the Bible says, for a better time. And I guess he didn't find one. He didn't come back. But that's how Jesus handled those things. No, right. When he had exactly. a crisis, when he had a pressure situation, he didn't, he didn't stop and think, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Should I vote on this? Should I have an opinion about this? He just said, no, no, no. The, the, the opinion's already, already written. The, the word of God's already there. It's already set in stone. It doesn't change. I know what the word says, so I know how I'm going to handle this situation. It is written. That's so wonderful to know, and it makes it easy well, of course for it does. us as human beings. And he, it's just like I was the whole, when you were talking about that. I was thinking if Eve would have only answered like Jesus did, exactly, because he came exactly. to her to have a conversation. Or if people listening to us today can go back and look at their life and say, "Dear God, if I'd only answered." Like that, instead of making a no, dumb emotional right. decision, what if I'd have just said, "Nope, I know what the Bible says, and I'm going to do it." You know, Renee, as you know, I've taught teenagers for decades and decades, and and I've taken teenagers overseas on mission trips, and I've personally trained them to win souls. I'm a soul winner. I can make somebody else a, a soul winner. But I've always taught those teens. I say, "Look, let me give you a little advice. You need to you need to make some decisions in your life. What I call drawing lines. You need right. to draw some lines right. in your life." And and make those decisions when you're sane. Make them when all your hormones are under control. Make them when you're in your prayer closet with God. Make them at night when you're when you're praying and you've got your Bible open and you're asking God some things. And if you'll make th if you'll make some decisions or draw some lines and say, I will never cross this line. And then the decision's already made. Like you say, uh I won't stay out past such and such o'clock at night, or I won't drink this, or I won't right. snort that, or I won't shoot that, or I won't, uh, I won't have sex with, you know, I, I'm, I, I will not cross this line. Here's what the Word of God says. So I'm going to, right now, while I'm sane, while I'm not under duress, I'm not under pressure, I'm going to make a sane decision that I, so help me God, I will not cross this line. Then, 
then it makes it easier when you're out with your friends and it's getting close to curfew or getting close to time to go to go home or it's getting, you know, your friends are putting pressure on you. Everybody's getting giddy or emotional or drunk or whatever else. And they say, hey, let's go to this party. Hey, let's go here. Hey, let's, let's drink this. Let's snort this. Let's shoot this. Let's, let's do that. You don't, you don't get in an emotional quandary and say, oh, my God, I wonder what I should do. What should I do? 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 No, you just say, no, it's written. Exactly. No, I've already I've already drawn that line. No, that's I, right. I already that's before right. God in my bedroom I drew that line and I said I will not cross that line. So I don't have to stop now and make the decision now right. under pressure. I don't have to make the decision now under peer pressure. I don't have to make the decision now with my friends. I don't have to make the decision now. I've already made that decision. I right. already know what I won't do. And then it's just so simple to say, no, right. I don't do that, or no, I don't go there, or no, I don't associate with those people. Well, and that that's like, you know, covenant things and commitment oh, things. Dean always would tell our congregation, he said, once you make a commitment, then you don't have to make a decision. No, that's it eliminates, exactly right. Same thing. It, it eliminates all of those areas in your life where you're you're up against it on something in, in, that, in that frivolous, pressured moment where you're going to just say something flippantly right. rather than going back to the post, exactly. going back to exactly. the foundation, exactly. going back to the Word of God. It is written. To, yeah, and it gives you a, a peace and a calm to where in your life that you can just face things no matter um, like the, the winds are blowing all around you, um, the, the tornadic wind of, winds of life that want to just upend everything you, you're feeling emotionally. And yet you can emancipate yourself from the emotion of the thing and go back to, wait a minute, you know, my life has succeeded up to this point by trusting in the Lord with yes, all my yes, heart. Yes, yes. I was looking at Proverbs 3 here, just a glance down on it and, and remembered those verses while you were talking where it says that, you know, that we're to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. And lean not to our own, our own to understanding. To our own understanding. And we live in a generation, Terry, before we have to go today, that we need to remind people to, um, you know, God has such confidence in you that he's put his spirit down in you. So he's not trying to make us ro- robotic in our response to life. And He and He he's made us all individuals, so we're all very different. But he has uh, put some things in us to where we know we can, we can take the human, um, uh, I think, the weaker side of who we are, the flesh, yes. out of everything and really not be led into temptation by just going back to what the Word of God says. You know, if I try to handle this emotionally, if I try to handle this out of something that has to do with my flesh, that's the weakest part of who I am. Of course. Of and course. If, I, if, if I'll just stay in the realm of the Spirit, lean not to my own understanding, but in all my ways acknowledge Him, He will direct my path. Yes, absolutely. He will give me the way that I should walk in. Proverbs says the way, the path of the righteous is raised and made plain like a highway. Yeah. God doesn't want it out there where you're having to, you know, um, it, it, without a flashlight, without a guide, without anybody no, to help you. Right. He's trying to make it up high, out there in the light. The block, path of the righteous grows brighter and brighter. Yes, yes, so yes, I, yes that's absolutely true, Renee. And listen, I wanted to just say before we uh, close the podcast this morning, that uh, this coming Sunday, we're going to be with our dear friends, Pastors uh, Daryl and Catherine Smith at Cornerstone Church in Flower Bluff, Texas, which Flower Bluff is a suburb of Corpus Christi. That's right. And uh, long, long time friends of ours, my and mine, we enjoy and being pastoring. with them. Yeah, they're pastoring a bunch of our former church people. And, sure. And uh, it's just like going home, old home week when sure we get to is. go there. It's wonderful. That's great. And then the following Sunday after that, We'll be uh, back in the Houston area in Katy, Texas, which is a suburb of Houston, uh, with uh, Larry and Colette Connor, and uh, they're dear friends of ours as well. Yes, and and all three of these churches sweet, we've been in in these three weeks are partner churches. Uh, we were with Danny and, and Alice Moy last week in Livingston, Texas, which is just north of Houston. And then, of course, like I said, in Corpus this week and then back in Houston next week. Right. And we, we've just been hovering in this South Texas, Houston <laughs> area uh, for three weeks here or trying. It'll be three weeks by the time we, we finish because we're waiting for grandbaby number 16 yes. uh, to discover America. And so uh, all three of these churches, like I said, are partner churches. And so uh, and your daughter, Abigail. Uh, who Jackie and I were there at the day of her birth and have been her godparents ever since she was born. And 
Uh, now I've gone from being her godfather to being her stepdad. But anyway, uh, Abby's about to have her third baby, uh, which will be baby number, uh, grandbaby number eight for you. And I've got eight grandkids, so right. this will be grandbaby number 16. Yeah, I catch up uh, with you. Between the, yeah, yeah, you're catching up with me. Uh, and anyway, so we're just trying to hang in this area for this baby to be born. Uh, but then after that, of course, we have to take off for North Carolina, and we'll be with uh, uh, Pastor Jim Jarman and his wonderful wife. Joyce. Miss Joyce. And uh, I'm going to do a ladies' meeting. You're going to do a ladies' meeting. For on the, the second year in a row. Yes, on then. the Saturday, and then I'm ministering on the Sunday. But uh, anyway, we I wanted to just say that since we're going to be in in the area here, so we'll be in uh, San, uh, be in Corpus Christi this weekend, and then in back in Houston in the Katy uh, in Katy, Texas, the following weekend. Right. And uh, we're believing for that grandbaby to show up to discover America <laughs> to to uh, make her debut. That's and, right. And so uh, we're excited about what God's doing, and we're certainly excited about all of our family and all of our grandkiddos. And uh, so uh, it, it, it's a blessing. It's fun. It's enjoyable. Well, it is. I've got my oldest granddaughter is coming back from six weeks of being in China. That's right. And then our oldest grandson is running the uh, television uh, department at, at Abilene Christian College. He's helping out, doing some great things over there. And, and you've got a grandson going into the military. And no, that's right. Next month he reports for basic training. Right. And one just graduated from high school. Another one just graduated and Jackson from Jackson just came on staff to work for us. <laughs> that's right. Uh, uh, we've got lots going on. And, you know, everybody's family. It just, uh, you know, God just sets the solitary in families. And that's we a great scripture. Isn't it, isn't it great? And it just says that, you know. If you don't have any family and if you're alone in this world, right. that's a tremendous scripture for you to pray and believe and stand confess on. and stand on. It says that God sets the solitary or the person all by themselves into families. God into. will provide you a family. He'll provide you right. uh, 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 people that love you to hang out with. I've been amazed at the grace of God in so many times in my life that, that maybe somebody I thought would really be there for me and stand with me didn't. And somebody that I never even thought of would be a, a, a friend and uh, helpful in my life or whatever I needed would just suddenly show up. Yeah, no, that's right. And, you know, you don't always get the love and the support where you think it ought to come from or who it should come from. But if you'll trust in the Lord, like we read to you earlier today, God will have people there for you. And he'll bring you out of a place of where it's not fruitful and it's not comforting. And he'll bring you into a place where you're satisfied with with the surroundings of, of the wonderful people that God will provide. He will set your life as a solitary person among people of like faith yeah, will. that will, will love you and respect you and you'll be celebrated it may not be a bunch of people but it may be two or three or four sure half a dozen sure. or so or it could be in a real family that just i've heard stories of wonderful things where people just really kind of got uh, everything but the legal papers adopted <laughs> into a family sure. a, a church family sure. you know uh, a neighborhood where you have that social uh, soul comfort that comes from the love of the people of God. Oh, absolutely. Or even if you're single, you know, you know my and Renee's story. Uh, I was married to Jackie for 44 years, and Dean, uh, Dean and Renee were married 44 years. And then Dean went to heaven, and the very next year, Jackie went to heaven. And so uh, I was a widower, and Renee was a widow, and we were alone by ourselves, yet we'd been friends for 45 years. Uh, and so uh, we just we just got married, and no, so right. there, there's single people out there believing for a mate, believing for a husband, believing for a wife, and they can use that same scripture and say, "Lord, you said you would set the solitary. That's me. Right. I'm by myself. You said you'd set the solitary among families. I believe you to bring not just a mate, not right. just a husband, not just a wife, but the husband, the wife, the mate that you have picked out for me." They would be compatible for me that we can do something for God together. Isn't it's that a great scripture? It is, and it's just amazing what the Lord will do if you'll trust Him with all your heart. Well, we've got to go. Well, for wait a minute. Okay. I, I was talking about where we're going to be the next three weeks, but okay. also uh, for our foreign trips. You know, we've just got the nations are begging, Renee. They're pleading. Oh, that's you know, I've, right. I got another message the other day from a foreign country that said. 
Dr. Mize, please come. Please come. Please help us. And, you know, we just want to be everywhere, and we want to go everywhere. We try to go <laughs> six times a year every other month. Right. And, of course, uh, my kids used to laugh at me, and, and Jackie used to laugh at me when I said that because it's many times more more than that. They say, Dad, no, you need is. to look at your calendar. It's more than six times a year. If but we, had the but money we want the to time, be every, it, we Well, that's always the, ki- the kicker. It's the calendar, yeah. trying to find a Some hole in the calendar. Country. And the money to get it done. That's why we so need and appreciate our partners. It'll well, help us we ever uh, the to, to get to these places. Because yes. every place we go, you know, the airlines want money. The hotels want money. The, the restaurants want money. The rental cars want money. I mean, everywhere Shockingly. we go, it costs <laughs> money. And that's that's just for the foreign trip. That's not even running the ministry at home and doing things that no, need to be right. done at home. So we appreciate and need our partners so so much appreciate them pray for them every day but anyway uh we were going to germany in in um, november with a great a conference there yeah. and then from there we'll probably go on into romania and maybe even to malta but we're working on that but uh then we'll be in mexico here just really quick uh but we, we they're asking us to come to asia they're asking us to come to malaysia to they're asking us to come to thailand again India. uh they're asking us to come to singapore again they're asking yes. us to come to indonesia they're asking us to come to india right. uh, they're asking us to come to africa we've got an african trip on the horizon here uh, and then of course there's also that uh, that trip that we've been telling the people about from time to time that we we haven't named the date yet and we haven't named the place yet because it's a dangerous area and they, they, they literally cut your head off for saying Jesus is Lord. And we're not scared for us, and we're not scared at all, but we're, we are concerned about the people because they're That's telling right. us that the people are in such anticipation that they're looking for fifty to 70,000 people to come when That's we right. come to preach, uh, to come there. And we know we'll have blind eyes open, deaf ears unstopped, Thank cripples you, walk, and, um, <laughs> maybe the dead raised. Uh, we'll have devils cast out. We'll have so many salvations. We'll feel filled with the Holy Ghost. But it's one of those countries where they, you know, they they like to attack uh, Christian meetings. They like to wear no, suicide so vests sad. and hurt people and kill people. So we ask our partners and our people that are listening to us. We ask them to pray for us. Pray in the Holy Ghost. You know, cover it in the blood. Uh, as we are, we were winning the battle in prayer before we go, and we'll let you know when we go. We'll let you know where and when. But we're right now. We're not telling. Uh, anybody publicly. We're telling some people privately uh, because you don't want the bad guys to know you're coming. You don't want to give them a chance to, to know that you're uh, on the way and, and to give them a heads up. So be in prayer. Bathe that in prayer with us. And then, of course, we've just got all these countries, of uh, uh, Peru and Colombia and, uh, and then South America. We've just got so many countries that are asking us to come, begging us to come. And we want to be at the right place at the right, right time. time. That's, That's exactly right. right. So Praise God. Amen. There's lots of work to do till Jesus comes. And, at, at, you know, one day there will be no more time. And so we've got to get the work done. We've got to train leaders and we've got to stir the church. And we've got to get the people of God prepared to do the work. So um, there's a job for everybody. Nobody needs to feel left out or ignored. I, there no, there's is, plenty to pray about. Oh, my about. goodness gracious. I look at the nursing homes and all the things going on in the world, the military, prisons, places for you to be valuable and and honored and needed. Well, as Terry said, we've got to go. Just remember, you can find us at terrymize.com, and then you can find us at terrymizeministries.org. And God will lead you and show you. And our schedule is there. Any of the materials that we have. There, there's so many things that, that the Lord will help catch your eye with. And uh, as you look at, at our website and find out what God's doing and where, where we are and where, what we're up to, that prayer will help us in so many ways. Well, we've got to go for today. And again, we love you. Happy summer. Happy uh, Fourth of July celebration coming up here. Happy and birthday to America. Happy birthday to America. Be in prayer, first of all, for our leadership. God bless you, folks. We love you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. You've been listening to a Mize Missions podcast. For all the latest updates to our global projects, speaking engagements, and social media, visit us at terrymize.com. You can partner with us to give living bread to dying men around the world. Get involved at terrymize.com. Until next time, thanks for joining us. This has been a presentation of Terry Mize Ministries.